Hi, I'm Ramen Lee Min Ho from a place so boring you don't need to know the name. Trust me. And yeah, that's my pen name. You know, just because pen names are fun and add an air of mystery. So I put together my love for K-dramas and my favorite noodles. But if you ever tell my mom that, I will deny it. Repeatedly. Now, before I continue, you have to like and subscribe to MSA. Sorry, but they make us say that. My mom is Italian, and she raised me and my sisters on her own in a very small town in the U.S. But we might as well have been living in Italy. Pretty much everyone we knew was Italian. Now, my mom has two talents. One, she's an amazing seamstress. She could make a stunning dress out of a potato sack. My sister and I used to wear all sorts of garbage when we were younger. Old curtains, bed sheets, towels, you name it. On a side note, do you know that cotton lasts for like a hundred freaking years? That's longer than the seasons of Grey's Anatomy, man. And I thought nothing could compete with that. Sorry, sorry, what was I saying? I always lose track, pardon me. Yeah, so two, my mom knows and remembers everything and everyone in town. And she likes to talk about it a lot. Like her mouth runs as fast as her hands. You and know the Bartoli family, right? Their daughter ran away with the homeless looking boy from the Rossi family. Now, after just a week, the boy sent her back home because she doesn't know how to make a pasta. What kind of girl doesn't know how to make a pasta? So now, man, she could just go on and on about these people, and I didn't give a rat's butt about it. But I indulged mom and heard all her gossip because I was her favorite, which is what makes me really unique. I'm the middle child, and I'm the favorite. Yeah, you heard me, an unheard of phenomenon, but you'll see why. My sister Bella is two years older than me, and it's not hard to see why she isn't the favorite. She's like the opposite of everything a firstborn is supposed to be. Lazy, whiny, irresponsible, and dumb as a button. Actually, buttons are quite useful, but you get the point. Like on her ninth birthday, she got a $50 note from her aunt, and I convinced her to exchange it with me for $21 notes. She was so happy she had so much money, and I was $30 richer. Also, I often got compliments on my rosy skin, which really bothered her, so one day, I let her in on my secret. Mom's been doing something special with me for years, and now I'll share it with you. You have to make a paste of baby powder, milk, crushed daisies, and a few tablespoons of mud. You know, so you don't get pale like a ghost. And then you put it on your face for an hour, but you have to sit really still while it dries, otherwise you'll get wrinkles. And oh, you can only do this between four to five in the afternoon because it's the golden hour. Works like magic. Worked out great. Because we were only allowed to watch TV for an hour between 4 and 5 p.m. And now I had it all to myself. This went on for a month till Bella ended up with acne. And mom found out what she'd been doing. My younger sister June came two years after me. And well, she's just a sweetheart. She could have been the favorite. But our jerk dad left right after she was born, and I think it just wasn't a good time for mom to bond with the baby. But I adore June. She's just easy to love. And she worships me. Like, I think she'd kiss my feet if I asked her to. I mean, I would never do that, of course. Only the occasional foot rub. That's not an abuse of older sibling power, right? I guess I'm the smartest of my sisters. And it's not me saying it. My teachers say it, mom says it, everyone says it. Look, this is a picture I colored when I was just five. No, wait, seven? Okay, fine, 10. Just focus on the colors and not on my amazing nails, okay? But since you're wondering, June did the nail art. But what really got to Bella was when anyone said I was the prettiest. Like in seventh grade, mom had come to our school for our parent-teacher meeting, and she met with my class teacher last, who couldn't stop gushing about me. What a blessing to have a child like beep. Oh, the year I had Bella in my class, it was so hard. That's when I started my blood pressure medication. But this one, oh, she's such a marvel and a beauty on top of that. Now, I'm not saying the other two are ugly, but they look more like you. And beep is more on her dad's side of the family with those delicate features, a bit like Cinderella and her stepsisters. <laughs> That made me so uncomfortable. Like, you know how the truth can sometimes do that. But why say it, man? And Bella just lost it. She flung a bottle of ink at my teacher. Oh my god, I ruined your clothes. Now, I'm not saying they were pretty to begin with, and you'd look like a sack of turnips no matter what, but I'm still sorry. 
Actually, they look less tacky now. Here's some more. Oh man, I laughed so hard. I peed a little. That was my fondest Bella memory ever. And yeah, there aren't many to choose from. But that one's pretty cool. Mom was really embarrassed though, and Bella got her reputation in town for being a little cray-cray. I honestly never cared that much about looks. But I understand why people are obsessed with being pretty. You get doors opened for you, someone will give you their place in a long line, offer to carry your stuff, or give up their umbrella for you and get soaked themselves. And sometimes you try to refuse, but people won't take no for an answer. Also, pretty people are almost seen as superhumans. I mean, think of some beautiful person, and then think about them burping or farting or pooping. You can't imagine it, right? Because how could someone that pretty do something so nasty and basic? No, no, they must poop litter. Like this one time in ninth grade, I was in an elevator in the bank when I felt this really big urge to fart. There was no stopping it, and I let it out quietly. But man, I stank the place up, and everyone glared at this poor big guy in the lift. No one even thought for a second that it could be me. I kind of felt bad, but how could I own up to that? So yeah, life was good in my little town, but my dreams were bigger than that. I wanted to see the world and maybe become a famous singer. Oh, did I mention yet that I have a great voice? Really won the genetic lottery, huh? Please don't hate me, y'all. I'd sing at every school event and even participate in local talent shows or sing at some restaurants. And any money I made, I put away in my piggy bank. I was saving up to go to LA one day to be a star. But things took a wild turn in 11th grade. One day at breakfast, mom was going through the mail when she nearly choked. Oh lord, my prayers have been answered. Which ones? You pray a lot, mom. Like seriously, God must be tired of you asking for so many things all the time. Will you just listen? You know our distant family friends, the Ricci family. Those really rich people? They once came to town uh, 10 years ago and we went on a picnic with them. And that Mrs. Ricci kept trying to get my mother's lasagna recipe from me. But I told her it was going to me with my grave. And then she tried to get, get to, to the, the point, point, mom. All right. Anyway, they have a son who's a year older than Bella. And she wrote to me saying that she wants to come and see my girls and hopefully choose one to get married to him. Isn't that amazing? Mom, this is America, and it's 2022. No teenager gets married. Oh my god, it's all I ever wanted. I've always wanted to be Mrs. Richie Rich. Yes, a hundred times yes. Oh, it's like I'm Cinderella. I'll never have to work a day in my life again. You already never worked a day in your life, Bella. Look, Bella is almost 20. She barely passed school, she's useless around the house, and she'll never get a job. Also, people in town still think she's, uh, unstable. Getting her married off to someone who isn't from around here is the best we can do. For us. Here, here. Now listen, the only problem in this plan is you. I don't want to have you around when they come over. They might choose you instead, and I don't want to ruin this chance for us. I mean, for Bella. Fine by me. The Ritchie family was coming over that weekend, so mom sent me off to my aunt a day in advance, right to the other end of town. I was in for a relaxing weekend. Aunt's house was close to a lake, so the next afternoon, I was sitting by the water practicing my singing when I spotted a boy swimming. And oh, mother may I, his blonde hair shone in the sunlight and the water rippled smoothly over his strong arms. Wow, now don't think I'm boy crazy. I find most guys annoying, actually. And who knew, maybe this one was annoying too. But who minds a little eye candy? It's the only candy that's good for you. But suddenly, he let out a sound I've only ever heard a cow make in labor. A jellyfish bit me! He passed out and started sinking. I swam like a graceful mermaid towards him. Man, he weighed a ton. I managed to drag him to the shore and checked his heartbeat. Yeah, he was gonna live. And up close, he did look kind of annoying. You know, those boys who are too pretty and think the universe revolves around them? Yeah, he was definitely giving off those vibes. 
I thought I'd wait around till he came out of his beauty nap, so I started singing one of my original songs. You wanna hear about this girl who makes jealous witches hurl? She had beauty, she had brains, there was talent in her veins. Not that everyone was dumb, but the town made her numb. What? Stay here forever, that made her feel bummed. She knew that there was more, so much more to her life than the gossip and the small talk being a dumb and dumb wife. It's not hard to see, the girl I'm talking about is me, so if you wanna hear the rest, pay up now, it's not for free. Suddenly, I felt something touch my foot. I'd almost forgotten the boy who was staring right up at me. Wow, you're a goddess, an angel, that voice, and, and you, you saved me, right? Yeah, but anyone would have done the same in my place. It's not special. Of course it's special. You saved my life. I, I think I'm in love with you. Aw, oh, man. This boy was dumber than I'd thought. Mm, that's so sweet. You know what? You still look pale. You should lie back down, and I'm gonna go make a mixture of herbs for your jellyfish bite. Oh, I've forgotten all of my pain, except that ache in my heart. Yes, 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 we'll deal with that too. Just close your eyes and I'll be back before you know it. I skipped off all the way to my aunt's house. I'd be gone in two days from here and I'd never bump into him. When I returned home, I went through the back door into the kitchen. Just as I popped a muffin in my mouth, mom walked in. What are you doing here? Hello, I live here. I'm your favorite child, remember? Shh, keep your voice low. The Ritchie family came for a second visit today, and they're in the house right now. You better not come out. Okay, okay, I'll just stay here. Just leave the cakes, woman. Oh, sorry, I was looking for the bath. Oh my god, it, it's you, the rapping angel. What the freaking fruitcake? The Ritchie boy was the guy I'd saved from the lake? Apparently, he'd stopped for a swim on their way here. His name was Luca, and he told his parents he was in love with me, and he'd marry me, or marry no one. Such a drama queen. He cried, Bella cried, his parents begged, mom panicked, and she sent them away saying, we need time to think. You really went out of your way for these guests, mom. You never make pasta for me. And yum, I haven't had this pastry in ages. Will you please get serious for a minute? What are we going to do? About what, mom? I'm not getting married, duh. You don't have to get married. It could just be an engagement till you know him better. Okay, fine. Just be his girlfriend. It's too good a proposal to pass. And I wanted it for Bella, but if it's not happening for her, you have to accept it. Before I could reply, Bella came flying at me. You stupid witch! I'm not letting you get away with this. Gosh, Bella, have you gained weight? Get off, you baby cow! I was so close to getting everything I've ever wanted, and you ruined it! I didn't do anything, and Luca is an idiot! Don't say that! He and I are perfect for each other! You're actually just reinforcing my point. Ow! Just to stop it, the both of you! I'll never forgive you, beep! And I'll curse you every single day for the rest of my life! I wish that you gain stubborn fat on your thighs that never leaves you. Well, I won't bore you with the details of what happened after. You know those annoying people who say, long story short, and then tell you every detail and all the bonus scenes? Yeah, I hate that. Anyway, I turned down the proposal, the Richie family left, but Luca sent letters non-stop. Bella stopped talking to me, which was amazing. But mom stopped talking to me too. And then a month later, she got really sick. I ended up using all my savings for her treatment. And somehow, she emotionally blackmailed me into agreeing to date Luca. See, with great favoritism comes great responsibility. Mom favored me all her life, and as her perfect child, I felt the responsibility to make her happy now. Really, it's not easy being me. Of course, Bella was furious. And after she gave all my clothes to the neighborhood dogs, she started muttering things under her breath whenever she saw me. Gosh, so immature. Thankfully, Luca lived very far away and we just talked on the phone. But he called so much that eventually, I made June take his calls and say, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, every other minute. He never knew it wasn't me. But he was supportive of all my singing dreams and said we could move anywhere I wanted to pursue them. Maybe sometimes your dreams come true in a way you didn't expect? Then one morning, I woke up with a really sore throat. I tried calling out to June for water, but my voice was gone. It turned out that I had laryngitis, and I was mute. The doctor said they couldn't say if my voice would come back. This was the first time in my life I was truly depressed. 
I could see all my dreams slipping away. Mom announced excitedly that Luca was coming, like that was supposed to cheer me up, and Bella's smug face made everything ten times worse. One day at dinner, she turned to me. See? I told you I'd curse you. You've lost your precious voice because of my curses. Or maybe it's just karma. For the first time in your life, you get what you deserve. For once, you lose. And something inside me just snapped. I threw my pasta at her face and then jumped on her. It took June and Mom some serious effort to save her miserable butt. Later that night, I was crying angry tears in my room when June slipped in. You know it's not Bella's curses, right? Of course I know. She's just unbearable. Why is she like this? Maybe because it's not easy to live in your shadow? She's always been told she's not as good as you. She's never even tried. Maybe because there isn't any point? You're pretty much perfect. How come you turned out so nice? It doesn't bother me that you're better. Also, being nice is easy. Being mean is hard. And it doesn't even feel good. Why are you writing things down? I have no idea. June had given me some food for thought. I guess it wasn't fun to always be compared to someone. And I guess I never made it easier for Bella either. Maybe I could start now. So when Luca arrived a few days later, I told him I was breaking up with him. He held my hands and looked really sad. Ha! Huh, see? I see a smirk! Animator, please, please go back a little bit. Okay, Animator, you can continue. It's not that I don't care for you, babe. But yeah, I totally get it. You need your space. Maybe if you get your voice back, give me a call? I won't be doing that, but I think you should ask out Bella. Trust me, you guys are made for each other. Looks like he listened, because when I went down later, Bella sprung on me like a python. Oh, thank you, thank you, my amazing, lovely sister. I'll start a prayer circle for you tomorrow, and you'll get your voice back in no time. You'll see. Now let's kiss and make up, but only in the air, because I don't want to ruin my lipstick. Bella and Luca got married a month later, and she left. And that is my favorite Bella memory, watching her leave. One evening, it was just me and June, and I was sipping tea when I spilled some on myself. Ow! June and I looked at each other in shock. I tried speaking a bit more, and I could. My voice wasn't totally normal yet, but it was coming back. We both started crying and dancing around for joy. My voice did recover completely, and I was able to sing again. But I felt a bit different. I felt more appreciative of the things I'd taken for granted. And June was wrong. Being nice was freaking hard. Much easier to be selfish. But I wanted to be nicer, and I really tried. A few months later on my birthday, Mom and June surprised me with a ticket to LA. The American Idol auditions are happening there next week, and you deserve this chance, love. I'd always waited for an opportunity like this, and now it was here. I was excited and scared. Good scared, though. Here I come, world. Also, in case you're wondering, this is not my real voice, obviously. They hired a professional voice actress to do the job. I can't do it. You know you can't be perfect at everything. Also, if you want a part two of me telling you what happened in LA, please comment. Ramen Lehman Ho, our amazing MSA character. He thinks bye!